while it is clear that the Busan document does include the private sector as a new actor, the truth is that there is no clarity on how they are supposed to engage within this process. Um, the remark within the Busan outcome document is essentially a very, very willy-nilly statement saying, we welcome the private sector, we acknowledge the importance of uh, economic growth. So the challenge will be designing a framework that works both for civil society, the private sector, and for governments. So for us, from a civil society perspective, in terms of how we are engaging in this process, we have two choices. Either we do nothing and watch it fall apart, because that's what will happen, um, or we engage and try and be as productive as possible. And I think that the governments, the donor governments, as well as, as uh, uh, recipient governments, partners, however you wish to uh, call it, um, have a lot to learn from civil society in this process, because we have been engaging in the private sector for a long time. And we have developed good practices, we've developed bad practices, and we will have to implement that somehow in the post-Busan framework. So the way that I find is the best way to get the private sector to engage as a development agent, or as a positive agent for development, because I don't believe that the private sector is a development actor, is to use effective taxation and regulatory structures to encourage the, to appropriately incentivize private sector to engage in the kinds of industries that we see as socially productive. If we see an industry as being incredibly destructive in terms of uh, ecological aims, in terms of uh, what it does for uh, industrial communities, we tax the hell out of them until they're no longer viable. Uh, and we impose regulatory frameworks so that multinational corporations that come into country have to behave on a certain level. But we also have to empower civil society at the same time both in its watchdog role and also in its uh, 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 role as a service provider. So we really need to empower civil society in the South to make sure that they can engage with the private sector productively and with governments productively and serve as a watchdog. Well, we're kind of in a tricky position there um, because there are very many different approaches that people advocate towards how we engage the private sector to make them productive for development. Part of it is our role as consumers. That is where we have the most power, uh, to be quite honest, because they are profit-oriented, but they also want to sell the stuff that they produce. So as consumers, we have to raise awareness within our own societies on what products are uh, pro-development, pro-poor, uh, that engage in, uh, in uh, long-term sustainability, both environmentally and domestically within uh, uh, the domestic private sector of developing countries. So that is one area where we have a tremendous amount of power. Awareness campaign, civil society is very good at this. Um, the fair trade campaign was remarkably successful at raising awareness on these issues. We have to be quite clear in our demands to the private sector of what we expect from them. Um, the side effects of private enterprise are going to happen one way or another until we develop effective green technology which can mitigate the majority of these side effects. Now the polluter pays principle is a very interesting principle in that the, the person who comes in and creates the mess has to pay to clean it up. It's a very interesting principle because technically it seems good, it's quite popular, but at the same time it's not really clear how well it is in terms of implementation. It's important to start protesting and to foment public opinion when these things go wrong, but there needs to be a way to, nip, to, to create a system where these things are already addressed before they go wrong. We can't continue having a reactive role um, as civil society to the messes that are made by governments in the private sector. We have to take a proactive role in terms of setting policy agendas, making clear what we demand. I mean, we have to have demands. We have to say, look, we want growth, fine, but we want growth underneath our, uh, by our standards, which means that we want it to be productive growth. We want it to be inclusive growth. We want there to be an element of distribution. We want there to be a, a solid uh, ecological and economic principles behind it. I mean, if public money is involved, there needs to be clear transparency about how that, how that money is used. Um, if public money is involved, public money has to be expensive. And what we mean by expensive money is there has to be clear monitoring and evaluation structures associated with it to make sure the projects that they engage in are actively, uh, are actively productive and in best interest of the taxpayer if it's within Spain or best interest of the developing country if it's a development project. I mean, these are the clear kind of uh, uh, conditions that need to be associated with private sector engagement. Because private sector is not democratically accountable, it's accountable to its shareholders. Which, but, the, but the money that they are using is publicly accountable. So we have to make it clear that if they want this money, it comes with a cost. But uh, yeah, no, in, in terms of uh, uh, what kind of indicators, I mean, uh, tax contribution has to be one. 
uh, especially if it's public money that's involved in the situation. And the truth is that tax contribution is um, something that should be across the board uh, on all private sector enterprises, whether or not they're beneficiaries of private mo uh, public money. Because ultimately, the private sector is beneficiaries of being within the country, of having an educated workforce, which is paid for by the state, of having a health structure that is paid for by the state, of having the various kinds of social protection schemes and the safety that is offered by being within the state. So they have a duty to pay taxes in order to uh, 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 endorse the structure that allowed them to develop internally. Transparency is, is a clear indicator as well. A lot of uh, businesses will say that transparency is problematic because a lot of information um, needs to be confidential so that uh, companies can remain competitive. But the truth is that information, confidential information only remains useful for a very limited period of time. So you could put a gap on it. I mean, no, no long-term confidential information actually remains um, relevant over a long period of time. In terms of development projects, Develop the, whether or not they have poverty eradication within their project design is, is a key indicator as well. Because if you're going to fund a development project with development money that's supposed to go to the south and engage in, development, uh, in, in pro poor development, then it has to have a clear outcome that is in line with this. You can't say, oh, we're going to sponsor a hotel because that will lead to economic growth. As a subsidiary side effect, we have development. That, is, that just doesn't work.